Hello, Kayla. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm very, thank you. Hello, Mumbacast listeners. Welcome to week 55. Yeah. Well, week 50 something else, but podcast number 55. Yes. I hope you're all doing well and enjoyed our great podcast last week on sled dogs. Sled dogs. Did, uh, quickly, pop quiz, what can you remember? What was the race called? The... I did a ride. Nice. And name three types of dogs that aren't the Siberian or Alaskan Husky. The Alaskan Malmute. Good. Um, the one I can, can't pronounce the name for. We can't just say that. Yes, I can. No, because it could be anything. It started with a... It's like a Samo- Samoid. Oh, yeah. Samoid. I think that's what we said. Yeah. And then... Uh, there was another one that was like kind of weird, like a just like a regular dog. It was like a <laughs> just like a regular dog, German pointer or something like that. Maybe I don't remember. There was definitely one that had German pointer in it somewhere, yeah. I guess. And I remember the one with Chinook, just because Chinook, Chinook. Okay, I'm going to say it wrong, probably. But that was last week, and we're not talking about that today. Nope. But I hope you did enjoy it. I know my brothers and sisters listened to it. They all phoned me and started mocking me, going, mm, "Let's get me the my phone. I was like, "Shut <laughs> up, guys! At least I'm doing something creative." And then they all mocked me. So, Aww. Ruth, Audrey, and anyone else who might be listening, welcome. <laughs> um. All right. So, today's topic: what we're doing? Nike. Nike. Yeah, Nike. It's interesting because I was reading through some of the documentary, the documentary, there's some of the documentation about the thing, and what you just said, Nike. In the UK, for some reason, we say Nike. Really? Yeah, and I don't know why because we're closer to Greece. So, mm-hmm. where's the name Nike come from? Did you read it up? Yeah, like a, it was one of the Greek god, goddess, goddess or god. I think it's goddess, but I don't okay. know. The Greek god of victory. Yes. And it's apparently pronounced in Greek Nike. Nike. Mm-hmm. But, you know, us being so close to Greece and Latin languages, you think we would get it right, but I don't know, I, was, I always grew up calling it Nike. Really? Yeah, even like, oh, I suppose, would you say I have a pair of Nikes on? I don't know. I don't know, I, I didn't know the other Nike day, trainers. you definitely said Nike, and I was like, I wonder if he's doing that on purpose, but now it all makes sense. Yeah, it's a British thing, huh. I don't quite get it. So, I mean, I guess the Americans, it's American companies, so I guess they say it right. Yep. So we're going to talk a little bit, a little bit Nike, a little bit about the history, a little bit the modern thing, and we'll see how things go. Yep. Excellent. All right, so let's, let's get, get ready, ready to, to mumble. mumble. Sweet. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to hit us up first? Uh, yeah, I can. I learned a lot about Nike. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. Um, that I didn't already know. So it was founded by Phil Knight and Bill Bowerman. So Bill Bowerman, Bill Bowerman. was the coach uh, at University of Oregon, and Phil Knight was his track athlete. Which name do you prefer there? Phil Knight, spelled K-I-N-I-G-T, or Bill Bowerman? I can't tell which one I prefer. Oh, I don't know. Both are quite cool names. Yeah. I think I'm going to go with the alliteration. Bill, Bill Bowerman. Bowerman. It's like a Stan Lee character. It is. What would he be good at? Running. <laughs> okay. running okay. really I, I fast think he, i think he wasn't very good at running very Probably. fast so i think that's what i read up but um okay bill bowman and phil knight mm-hmm. and they founded it in january 25th 1964 so is that when they founded nike well that's when they found it so it was originally called blue ribbon sports or brs and they were a distributor for um like initially, they were a distributor of a Japanese shoemaker called Onitsuka Tiger. Onitsuka Tiger. Onitsuka Tiger. Yes. Mm. I saw a good bit of that kind of stuff when I was in Japan. The Onitsuka Tiger, mm-hmm. so that still exists. Mm-hmm. So they were just a distributor. Yes. And then they went into creating their own shoe. Yes. Oh, nice. Yeah, so they were the distributor for that. They made most of their sales at track meets. 1964... I think it said, so they sold something like 1,300 pairs and grossed $8,000. That's a lot for 1964. Yeah. Um, Considering, I'm assuming it was just one shop or one sort of small company. Yeah. Well, cool. so by, 19, by 1965, they had one full employee and their sales had <laughs> whoa, went whoa, up whoa, to hold on, hold one, on. one full, full employee. employee. Yeah, like besides themselves. And their sales <laughs> were up to $20,000 that year. 
I think that's a lot of money for that time. I mean, that's a really big from eight grand to 20 grand in a year. And then by 1966, they had opened their first full retail store in Santa Monica, California. Huh, because they were, they grew up and started us in Oregon? Mm Mm-hmm. How close is Oregon to California? I think it's pretty close. Oh, I have no idea. All on that side. I guess the Oregon Trail is like, is that when people are traveling? I have no idea what that is, actually. (laughs) I feel like some people are traveling, like, for gold. And California had a lot of gold, I guess. I don't know. I have no idea. Anyway. And then, so, in 1967, they expanded their retail to the East Coast into Wellesley, Wellesley, Massachusetts. So, they Mm -hmm. just had one shop. In so, Cal- California, one shop in Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. And they were still oh. distributing the Onitsuka Tiger brand okay. at this point. D- does it say at all how they got, like, introduced to this shoe? I have no idea. Like, it's just, it's, I, th- I found it very weird that, like, it's just like, okay, let's just be a distributor for this Japanese shoe. But, I mean, I guess if yeah. you're, like, the head coach of track of a, of a university at that time, and then you, like, you're players are wearing or your track team members are wearing their shoes maybe sure. that's they yeah i guess so deal. i mean back then if there was no shoes you have to get them from somewhere yeah mm-hmm. um so then in 1971 i don't know like how this all unfolded but basically what happened was they ended their relationship with onitsuka tiger to launch their own line mm-hmm. but i think what may have happened first not 100 percent sure about this this isn't all in the same year that this happens uh, Bill Bowerman puts rubber on a waffle iron and like creates that typical like groove pattern. Yeah, so I read this too. So he got the idea for the initial sh- or his initial shoe for making waffles of his wife, mm-hmm. and then they had like a waffle grooved pattern, and mm-hmm. that's when it was spawned the the Nike waffle trainer, yep. which was patterned in 1974. Yeah, so. Yeah. 1971 was when he initially like put the rubber on there and was like, "Whoa, this is a good idea." And so they like ended their relationship with Onitsuka Tiger and launched their own line. Um, and in 1971, that's when Jeff Johnson came in and established the name Nike. Who's Jeff Johnson? The first employee. The guy who established their name Nike. Okay, so I, I, <laughs> I couldn't find much so else about him. I think Phil Knight. He originally. Do you know what he originally wanted to call it? Mm-mm. Dimension Six. That's it. Mm. Like, I mean, Dimension Six. I guess maybe back then it? it would have been a little bit sort of space age and new and kind of mm-hmm. cool. But uh, yeah, Nike, apparently Nike was from that very first employee, Jeff Johnson. So he was okay. the first employee, according to my cool. notes. Yeah. Yeah. So then, yeah. So by June eighteenth, they were they were using the word the name Nike, um, and. They so they started creating their own shoes. Yeah, with the swoosh by Carolyn Davidson. Yeah, so I had they, that was designed at a local university. Yeah, and I think it just said she was paid like thirty dollars. Yeah, so to, it was P- Portland State University and paid thirty five bucks. Yeah, to create one of the most iconic mm-hmm. after like Coca Cola, McDonald's, maybe. Yep, is very few other, and it's so simple. Yeah. but the modern Nike swoosh isn't quite the same so i've got a picture of the pattern here okay. i'm gonna pass it over to you and just on the the right hand or well, both the the night lettering and the swoosh are just slightly off you can see it's definitely been tweaked a little since then yeah you know it's got a lot bit more of a curve to it and a bit more of a weird movement mm-hmm. i guess um i wonder what the inspiration there was I like, now know. nobody can think of the word Nike without thinking of a tick. Mm-mm. Or swoosh, as they're going to call it. Yes. Didn't they call it swoosh because tick was taken? Like, you can't patent a tick. I don't know. But you can patent a swoosh. I wonder if swoosh was actually included. Of that, did that later on. I'm not sure. But by 1922, or, sorry, January 22nd, 1974, um, that's when it became a registered trademark. 1974? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh yeah, okay, fair enough. And what about the slogan with it? Just um, do it. When was that? Okay, created? so they by 1976 they had their their hired they hired their first advertising agency, and I think it said that oh by 1977 they had their first brand ad I guess with that agency, mm-hmm. and it was there is no finish line that was the tag. Okay. Um, but no Nike product was actually shown in that ad. Huh. 
It was like just the, uh, oh, the okay, so it was just a logo and a, some uh, sort yeah. of fancy scene or something. Um, okay. And then in 1988 is when Just Do It. Wow, is it that late? Yeah. It's only 30 years old. Yeah. Oh, actually, that makes sense because what we'll get onto a little bit later is the 30th anniversary of the Just Do It campaign. Okay. So that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. So do you know where the Just Do It came from? Um, no, I don't. So there was this, like, I, I read a little bit about it. I didn't read much about it. There was, like, some, like, I don't know if it was a serial killer or just, like, a guy who murdered somebody. His final words were, let's do it. And so they, like, adapted it from that. Yeah. You know what? I, as you said that, I had it on, on a set of my notes. That's so huh. weird. Was it a serial killer? Or yeah, yeah, just... you're right. So a serial killer called Gary Gilmore. Mm-hmm. He said, let's just do it. Let's do it. Just before he was shot by firing squad. Yeah. Uh, but this was only revealed apparently in 2009, so they had hidden it. But that he was shot in 1977, okay. so it was somehow they were holding on to that slogan. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I just think it's weird that you're like, I like what that serial killer said. Let's, let's make it part of our brand. Yeah, it seems. Well, I guess. Yeah, wait, what's this? I guess just do it does work. Yeah. But how do you get it from let's do it? I almost feel like that was. Post getting it all done, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Other important dates: nineteen eighty, they attained fifty percent of the sh- of the market share in U.S. athletic shoe market. Wow. And then by December of nineteen eighty, they went public. So that's when they end up having people who can buy shares mm-hmm. of the company. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, nineteen ninety, they moved the headquarters to Beaverton, Oregon. <laughs> and then November nineteen ninety, the first Nike retail store called Nike Town. Opened in downtown Portland, Oregon. Wow, yeah, I never, I never would have thought Nike, Oregon. You know, I just no. never would have crossed my mind. Mm-mm. Nike Town, though that that's that's been used in stores all across the world mm-hmm. now. I never thought. Well, to be honest, I never Nike knew Nike was so young. I didn't either. I, I don't know why. I guess thinking of the logo and the the brand itself, it isn't going to be a two hundred year old brand, yeah. but. It's less than 60 years old, mm-hmm. and it's, that's incredible. Yeah. And then, so there were some other, like, random things. So I didn't realize they had acquired so many companies. I must, did they acquire them and take over them, or acquire them and like, maintain their name and just run them? I think acquired them, maintain the name, ran them, and then they let some of them go, too. So, like, in 1988, they acquired Cole Haan. Have you ever heard of them? No. Me neither. Then they sold them in 2013. Okay. In 1994, they purchased... Bauer Hockey sold them in 2008. Have you heard of them? No. Like 2002, they acquired Hurley. I did not know that they. Hurley is like the skateboarding yeah. brand, right? Yeah. Okay. I've heard of them. I actually have yeah, owned some of them. But I didn't know that, that Nike owned them. No, until I knew the other one that you might mention in a minute, but I didn't know. Did I know Hurley? It probably have crossed my mind, but I didn't yeah. pay attention to it. So they still have Hurley. 2003, they acquired Converse. Didn't know that they were. For how much? Three hundred and nine million dollars. Does that seem a lot or a little to you? I can't tell. I feel like Converse is older than Nike, and so it should be more. Yeah, but I guess I think I don't know whether. So I got my first pair of Converse in about two thousand three, actually. Okay. Um, and I think that's when they're coming right back into fashion. Maybe like I that's got, why. Like, that first, or that first second wave of Converse. Yeah. So I don't know whether Nike's been able to push them or just Converse happened to get in the Nike or dead set or get in the right yeah. time. Hmm. But uh, I think that seems, that doesn't seem like a lot to me. No. But that could be of the development since then. They're yeah, worth yeah. a lot more now. I don't know. Um, 2004, they acquired Starter, sold them in 2007. 2008, acquired Umbro and sold them in 2012. I'm aware of Umbro. Yeah. And then in 2013, they were made a member of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. I have no idea what that is. So I think there's like, I'm probably going to get this wrong, but I think there's like a group of 500, maybe that's the S&P 500. I don't know. There's a group of companies that when you take their like stock, like what they're worth in the stock market, like that, those companies are what either drives it up or drives it down. And it's one of those now. Oh, okay. So they're basically... I think there's five. They're a companies. big contributor to the stock market. Yes, and like they're retail they're a big contributor to whether it rises or falls for the day. Okay, I mean, I guess looking at some of the stats of this company, does that make sense? Mm-hmm. 
You know why I was sort of interesting is how all these different companies have different three letter stock names. Mm-hmm. You know, and you always I, you see them on movies. I don't I don't understand stocks really. So, but people can lead it as like, okay, that's Nike and that's Apple and that's whatever and that's whatever else. And that's I don't cool. know what Nike is. Apple's APL. Nike is N K E. Okay. I wonder sense. who's got like ass and <sighs> butt and what other weird words can we think? Tit. I wonder who tit is. <laughs> but if they're not, well, I guess all of them have one. And the, then just like the, the top 500 are the ones that are like really yeah, looked at. I guess so. Hmm. Do you have an answer for their history? Um, 2016, Phil Knight stepped down as chairman. What age um, is Phil Knight now? Probably that is a old. good question. And then like... Just the important people. Bill Bowerman was Bill Bowerman, Bowerman and Phil Knight were the creators. Also, they created it with twelve thousand or twelve hundred dollars. Wow, that's so little. Yeah. I mean, that's probably a lot again in the time. Yeah, nineteen sixty four. But, but yeah, um, Jeff Johnson. You said first employee. He helped named it. Carolyn Davidson, the designer of the swoosh, and then Mark Parker is the current CEO. So, who do you think Nike's main competition is? Almost Under nobody. Armor. You think Under Armour? I don't think they're like their main competition. Yes, but I don't think that. I think it depends what market you're looking at. Okay. Because if you go worldwide, it's probably Adidas. Yeah. Like Adidas holds a massive soccer market, football. That's true. For the real world, and <laughs> I guess then it'd be like more well, Under Armour, maybe, but only in America, really. Yeah. Reebok. Hmm. A little bit because of UFC and CrossFit, maybe, but... Lululemon. <laughs> yeah. Well, your Lululemon probably did steal some of their market. Yeah. A small share, but some. Because Nike's main thing is shoes, yes, I'm assuming. Yes, and Lululemon doesn't really have shoes. Doesn't have shoes. I can't shoes. think of any other company, especially after acquiring things like Converse. Yeah. With that being said, how many Nikes do you own? Nikes. A lot. Well, yeah. I did. How much do you own right now? Do I wear Metcons or do I wear... Oh, shit, I forgot about Metcons. I have... See, all of my shoes have become CrossFit shoes. So before, <laughs> prior to that, when I only wore, like, normal tennis shoes, they were all Nike. Okay. But now that they're CrossFit shoes... Yeah. I don't remember what kind of wear. So I currently have three Nikes. Two which are Metcons. Mm-hmm. And then one which are Nike Air. Something yeah. or others. I think that's it. And in the past, when I was young, I've had, I remember I had one pair of Nikes when I was in high school that were stupidly white and they were blue and white. I like blue and white, but they were naff. They'd be naff now, maybe. Mm-hmm. They're cool, but then. But I never had other Nikes other than that. I was obsessed with Nike shocks. Are they the ones with like the, the four pillars at the back? Yes. Yeah. So a friend of ours had Nike shocks when I first met them and they wore them forever. And we met them at CrossFit and she wore them. All the time. And it was really... Because nobody had shocks in UK. Nobody mm-hmm. Nike's... UK's a different market when it okay. comes to trainers, really. And we call them trainers, whatever. And everyone... We all thought she had weird shoes on. <laughs> so, I... Like, one of my friends in high school... Or middle... It was middle school at that point. Maybe it was elementary school. Shit. Shoot. I don't know. <laughs> um, they had Nike shocks, so I wanted a pair. And I <laughs> so begged my parents for them. And they got me like the off-brand Walmart version. And I was so embarrassed. But then finally, so that was middle school. So in ninth grade, I got my first pair of Nike shocks. And I wore the shit out of them. They just were completely destroyed. And then um, had some other pairs or whatever. And like they don't really matter. But then in college, I was like, I'm going to, they they came out where where you could design your own shoe. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I'm going to design my own pair of Nike shocks. So Uh I did it. And like, they're way more expensive if you design your own. So I just went to New York and saw Wicked on Broadway. And I was obsessed with (laughs) it. So I designed this bright green, like Wicked alphabet color green, Mm -hmm. black and white pair of Nike shocks that Drake was like, please do not buy these, Kayla. Please do not buy these. And I bought them anyway. And I think I wore them twice. You because, still them. huh? You still got them. You've Probably. Got them I don't know. You've got to wear them out for me. I don't know where they're at. Be, I don't know if I still be, have them. They'll be cool and retro now. They were so ugly. Yeah. Yes. I would That's love so to find them. Uh, find a pair of shocks. I liked them a lot. They the were ugliest, very easy to roll your ankle in, though. Yeah, I bet. The ugliest pair of shoes 
that my brother ever had. Oh no, were they Adidas? I can't remember. As I said, Nike wasn't as big in the UK. But sneakerheads absolutely love these shoes. And I think it's because it's a mix between they bring out new models constantly, Mm -hmm. but they keep a kind of a line, if that makes sense, whether it's the Dunks or whether it's the Jordans or whether it's now the the old Yeezys or the LeBron, you know, whatever, whoever they're publicizing. Because they don't do Yeezys anymore, right? That's Adidas. I have no idea what those are. Yeezys, Kanye West shoes. Mm-mm. So I think he originally did one from Nike and then he's moved to Adidas. Okay. I think. Anyway, real quick, how much do you think are some of the most expensive pairs of Nikes? Like on like eBay or like to buy on their website? Um, On like if you were to want to buy them now. Like on their website? It's, no, no. So like ones that have been purchased... Oh, okay. And now you want to buy them off market. Like five hundred dollars? I to keep going, son. Two thousand dollars? Yeah, then a little bit more. Three thousand dollars? Oh please, come on. I have no idea. <laughs> All right, so that's insane already. There is a stupid it depends what run you're going on, because okay. some of them will be like you've got the Nike Jordan I think it's the Jordan Macamore one. So mm-hmm. the Macamore um, Air Jordan six. 25k for a pair. I don't know why. No That's idea insane. why. 8,000 for a pair of like, Air Force Ones. I don't get it. No. Also, well, this is... DJ Khaled, Air Jordan 3s, grateful. $25,000. What the heck? That just doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't. But you get even like. So, talking about Jordan, Michael Jordan's game wearing shoe, or oh, like the Flu Gate shoes, mm-hmm. whatever the Flu Game one is. They were something like stupidly expensive, like fifty thousand dollars or something ridiculous. That's crazy. If not more. These are kinda Nike's Converse. So the Michael Jordan's game worn Converse back in nineteen eighty four, guess how much? Thirty thousand. I don't know. Go up. Eighty thousand. Go up. Two hundred thousand. Almost a hundred and ninety thousand dollars. What? For a pair of worn converse trainers wow yeah speaking of they're the people they sponsor can you name any of them other than michael jordan who they acquired in 1984 um any basketball players because anybody do basketball players. i know they do some of the soccer players like ronaldo rondinho wayne rooney um lino messi probably a couple of other uh, football players and why are you shrugging your shoulders I thought this was a question I have like six of them written down <laughs> and none of them were football players okay none cool none of them were those um, probably LeBron James probably Dwayne Wade probably Forrest not for, I, don't, I don't know like Griffin Boy what's his name I don't know so I'm, not, I'm not good with American football in 1972 people. they had their first sponsor and his name was like I Ili Ili Nast, Nast, Nastasi. He was a Russian tennis player. Then their next one was, or their next big one was Steve Prefontaine, and he ran track at Oregon. Um, Michael Jordan in 1984. And so him and then Spike Lee as Mars Blackman were their two biggest, like, boosters of the brand. So Spike Lee, not actually an athlete? No. Okay. He played an athlete in a movie, oh, and the athlete's name was Mars Blackman. <laughs> okay. And then uh, they sponsored uh, all of Penn State University athletics, and then Tiger Woods was their other big one. Oh, okay. Um, I guess, yeah, Tiger Woods, because they stuck by him, didn't they, during his controversy, or did they drop him? I don't know. I can't remember. I think it's their sponsorships... They mainly do good ones. Mm-hmm. I know that they've uh, they've had some issues in the NBA with people like um, Stephen Curry going with Under Armour because okay. they want good deals and stuff. Yeah, but I don't know. I think uh, recently they've made some questionable. It depends who you ask. Depends who you ask, but questionable 
um, endorsements, mm-hmm. sponsorships, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, slightly questionable, depending on what side of the discussion, mm-hmm. we'll say, you are on with the recent 30th year of the Just Do It campaign with Colin Kaepernick. Kaepernick? Yes. Am I saying his name right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, so he is a, or was, a 49ers quarterback since mm-hmm. 2012. Um, but I think we're going to save that topic. We yes. can maybe move on to it following today. Uh, so we can start with a little bit, you know, nice wee segue, kind of almost two-parter yes. type episode. So keep that in mind, guys, if you want to hear a little bit of our opinions or even just what the hell is all that about, mm-hmm. stick in next week and we'll chat a little bit about that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anything more you got to say about Nikes? Uh, they won two Emmys for commercials in 2000 and 2002. Oh, what <laughs> yeah. commercials? That, that sounds like something we sh- should have seen. It you know probably it was we something we saw. I have no idea which commercials they were. Can you remember any like good Nike commercials? No. There must be some good I mean, ones, right? I remember the newest one, but we'll What's talk about that oh, later. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is that actually a commercial? Though? I think so. I've not seen that one. I just saw the picture when it's got his face and mm. the other crap on it. Have you seen all the memes? We'll talk about the next yes. week because the memes are funny. <laughs> yeah, we'll get on to that next time. I have had a couple other controversies, to be honest. Um, Nike's, I think if you think sweatshops and yes. kid labor, I think they've been definitely part of at least some of that. Uh, yeah, I think so too. The child labor allegations. I know during the 90s, Nike faced a fair bit of criticism from factories in Pakistan and Cambodia. Mm-hmm. Whether it was shoes or footballs or something. I don't know if they've tightened up on that. I really don't actually know. I know in 2001, BBC did a documentary kind of showing that. And it followed six girls through a seven-day working week, often 16 hours a day. Wow. Which is, uh, I get, it's strange because that's normal yeah. in Cambodia and Pakistan. I'm not saying it's right by yeah, any means, but these kids need to work. Yeah. If they don't work, yes, they go into education and stuff, but who's paying for that? And they can't do other. And it's, it's a weird, it is the market over there. So, yeah, it's a little bit, com- uh, I, no, I'm, I'm taking a stance. I don't agree with it. But <laughs> no, I don't either. There but are I see what you're saying. Where it's required. Yes. Like so maybe those families can't survive. Yeah. And then there's also ones about um, strikes in Canada and something else about paradise papers, but I didn't really look into that one. Something to do with tax or something. I'm oh, not sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't read much up, up on much of the controversies. All right, so I want to quickly run through the competitors again, and you're going to tell me if you would buy them over Nike. Okay. Okay, so Nike is currently what you'll buy. Adidas. No. No? Why? I don't know. Is it, Nike, Adidas isn't big in the US, really. No. Maybe, I don't even know, football teams have So what I like about Nike is they've got the three stripes. Do you know what three stripes stand for? We're you talking about Nike or Adidas? Sorry, Adidas. No, I don't know what they stand for. I don't know why we're going to this, but Adidas, so apparently it stands, or oh, like when you have... Three dark ones, and you have like the white space in between. It refers to the running tracks oh. around a track. I think it was kind of cool. Just a kind of good wee logo. I don't know what that flower thing stands for, but you don't see that. You know how you remember it spell Adidas? It was ah dead Indian did ah shit and did it down ah. I can't remember the L I stood for that. Oh, what? That's I don't know. We had to spell Adidas when I was a kid. It was ah dead Indian did ah. And you'd say shit. Cool. <laughs> Number two would be Reebok. Would you buy Reebok over Nikes? Yes. Yes, I, I do. currently do. <laughs> but only but for. I think it's because of the CrossFit like, community. Um, you can pick up. Um, I think I would only buy the Nanos. I don't actually like the Reebok gear better than Nike. I don't think. Like I know I have a whole bunch of Reebok stuff, but I haven't actually bought the majority of it. I did buy this Reebok sweater the other day, and I have not stopped wearing it. Is it comfy? Yes. But is it because it's a new sweatshirt or because it's Reebok? I don't know. Hmm. See, I don't buy enough sweatshirts because we live in... F- I was going to swear, but I don't want to put more squeaks in. Um, <laughs> Texas is too hot. To wear. I'm pre- I've got joggers on right now, which we call... Uh, don't we call them tracksuit pants? Yeah, I, know. Uh, I know what joggers are. I know, are. but for the audience. Oh. I don't know if they know. Um, and I am sweating my balls off. <laughs> 
So even in Brandon's ice palace. Ice box. Yeah. Yeah, so I would buy Reebok, but only recently, only because of CrossFit. Yeah. Before that, ooh, probably not. Probably not, no. I always, I always remind me of Reebok Classics, which are kind of... I don't understand why yeah. people like them. I don't. I just don't like them. Mm-mm. That foam ground, anyway. Puma. No. No. Have you ever bought anything Puma? No. Neither have I. I got some Puma rugby boots once. Mm. I quite like the symbol. I like the curvature of the word Puma. Mm-hmm. And the puma, which is actually a cougar, which is actually a panther, which is actually like a mountain <laughs> lion. Apparently, they're all the same thing. I didn't know they're this. They're just confused. Yeah, I don't get it. And so I think puma and Adidas mm-hmm. are brothers, or the people that started it from brothers from the same place in Germany. Really? I believe it's Adidas and puma. And they are sort of big competitors with each other, but also with Nike, apparently. Fila. Have you ever had a Fila? Yes. And no, I would not buy it. No, nope, I've never. Uh, my mom and dad have bought me Fila stuff before. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, mom. Thanks, dad. I don't like the symbol. It looks like a digital. Com- I don't know. I'm not a fan. Converse. Yes, yes. please. But they're not. How but can they be a competitor? Yeah, they're not a competitor. They're, they're part of it. That. But I love. Con- I got more Converse shoes than anything else. Um. So they're they're tops to me. Yeah. But they don't do enough other gear. It's just all shoes. So I'm going way off topic here. But I'm going to speak about things. So Converse have that iconic rubber toe, yeah. like that hexagonal sole stop thing. And up until the last couple of years, they haven't really failed any copyright on people copying it. Mm-hmm. Like I've seen Tommy Hilfiger, I've seen Lee Jeans, I've seen um, that boxing company from the UK, I can't remember what it's called, all create identical versions. Mm-hmm. But only recently have they started to kind of... Uh, put the hammer down and try to stop these from happening because really? they feel like it's diluting and taking away from their uh, quality brand. Yeah. yeah, it definitely does make sense. Anyway. Hmm. They, um, I'm just talking random crap now without you mentioning it. New Balance. Would you buy New Balance? No, not anymore. I did it in like, middle school. Like New Balance for the thing to wear. Like, See that? It's so funny how it's different because... The US, like New Balance to us back home, when we first started becoming a brand, people were like, that's so... It was basically like a Walmart brand. Mm-hmm. Nobody knew them. Yeah. And people thought it was like fake Nikes. And, oh, okay. But now looking at it, people, people are like, oh, cool, you got some New Balance on. I'm like, what? No. <laughs> time yourself. <laughs> I've, I've actually seen that. And yeah. oh, it's, I don't know. To me, it's what a dad... At a grill barbecuing would wear, and they're white and they're ugly and they're heavy. Yeah. So, but there, but apparently, the New Balance and Fila are both above Under Armour. Really? Which I'm surprised at. That surprises me. This maybe this must be old because I'm sure Under Armour making bigger moves than that. I would think so, but maybe not. Yeah, I suppose they are still quite a small brand in that sense. Would you buy Under Armour? Yeah, I have. Recently, with you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like the rock stuff. I don't know, just because I like the rock, actually. He could, he could be any company. He could be a feeler and I'd buy it. K-Swiss. No. No. The, again, they were big for a while. But then the initial came out, people were like, five stripes? Are you just Adidas plus a couple of stripes? <laughs> and then I they only had like one model. And I don't know. Anyway. Asics. Uh, yeah, for running shoes. Yeah, I, I like Asics. I've worn a lot of Asics. Did you know they're from Japan? Uh, maybe. I've worn Asics rugby trainers a lot. Okay. Rugby trainers, rugby boots. I have just now noticed that that swirl mm-hmm. isn't even part of the logo, like the name. Yeah, I thought that no. was the A. Nope. I used to call them Basics as well because <laughs> I always thought it was the B, the Basics. swirl. Uh-huh. And just didn't know. Just didn't know. Basic Asics. Linying? No, I've never heard Linning. of that. I'm assuming that's just a Chinese company. Yeah. And that's about it. So, Some Nike rules. Yeah. As I was saying, other than Adidas, which are pretty close when it comes to world... Re- oh, no, not even close. So world revenue for Adidas is $16 billion. What do you think it is for Nike? Uh, 25 Thirty-three billion. 
that's massive. Yeah, it is. In fact, if you add up the rest of them and add it to the Nike, Nike have got 50% of the market. Yeah. It would appear. All right. Anything else to say about Nike? I have nothing. I think it's quite interesting. I never knew the history and the start mm-hmm. of Nike. I just assumed they were always there. <laughs> yeah. I never thought about it. There's that book, that Shoe Dog book, but I haven't read it yet. Okay. I'm not, I'm yeah. I do it. The only other thing I want to mention about Nike about pop culture. Did you ever see A Knight's Tale with Heath Ledger? No. You've never seen A Knight's Tale? No. Man, we have to get it. It's a good movie. So it's got him, and he's pretending to be a knight, and he's really good at, uh, what's it called when you run off a horse and a spear? Jousting. Yeah. So he's really good at jousting, and he makes up a fake name to be a jouster. Okay. And he's wondering about, and who's Vision? What's his name again? Like, the actor? I don't remember. Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. I can't remember. Anyway, him, he, he's in it too, and he's a really good character. Anyway, they at one point, they pick up this blacksmith girl who wants to be part of their clan, and they, mm-hmm. as they're wondering about. And she engraves a wee swoosh into his armor, and she's like, oh, look at this. It's my family crest, and it's the like swoosh, and it's just a wee... That's cool. It's a wee funny wee sponsorship there. Um, Oh, also I wanted to say, you spoke about earlier about Michael Jordan. Mm-hmm. Do you know how much money he still makes yearly from these shoes? Um, no. A hundred thousand dollars. No. Not more? Th- yes, more. One million dollars. More. Three million dollars. More. What the heck? Um, fifty million dollars. More. One hundred million dollars <laughs> i think i can't seem to find it oh we go so i know 60 million dollars a year wow so a year on endorsements and royalties that's insane he doesn't even play basketball anymore no 60 million a year that's insane for doing nothing other than being the name of the shoe all right sorry i just want to sell that in because it was interesting yeah you good yeah you're looking at a clock. That's a cool clock. <laughs> <laughs> I just noticed it. It's a cool clock, guys. We may put that on a picture on Instagram, <laughs> just so you guys know. Yes. What cool clock distracted. Um, last one. Last fact. Okay. Just, I want to use them all out. Where do you think is Nike's biggest store? What if I think I know the answer? Then you suck. Have you ever been there? No. No. Where is it? London. And have you not been there? I've been there. I didn't even know it was a bigger store. It was a very big store, though. Really? It didn't seem to have much in it, though. It was That's one of those... usually how it is. Like, we're like one thing's on the wall. But I don't get that for night. It's not like if they're expensive. Yeah. You know, and they definitely have enough to fill up a big store. Like, that outlet store probably had oh more my God, stuff. Oh, that made me so mad. Oh, yeah. The outlet store was terrible. It's got lots of good priced night stuff, though. <laughs> Just showed you how overpriced some of the shops are, yes. though. I don't get Because they're probably still making a massive profit. Yeah. Bloody swoosh, man. Do you think it made it, made it so... Why have they made it so big? What, the store? Nike. Why are Nike so much better? Because they just are. Is it branding? Branding, yeah. Is it exactly because it is. they have hit a certain sport that hits a certain culture and makes it and takes it to a different level, you know? Like, the whole basketball culture... It's very sort of brandy and very check out my Nikes, mm-hmm. box fresh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Where Adidas haven't hit that market. And do you think, like, do you think the Nike or NBA will ever lose the Nike sponsorship? No. Is it sponsored by Nike? I'm assuming it is. I have no is. idea. I don't know if it is either, but I'm assuming it is. I don't think they ever, I don't think they ever could. No, I think that basketball players are always going to wear Nike shoes. Yeah. They're trying to be like Michael Jordan. Why would you not? In Space Jam. The greatest of all time, potentially. Depending on who you ask. Yep. Most people. Okay. All right. Finish it. Or like you, check it out. Let us know your favorite brand. What pair of shoes do you have the most of? Uh, what was your first pair of shoes that like you wish you still had, but you know would be totally uncool now? Mine were a lime green pair of Adidas. Probably my Nike Shocks. Oh yeah, your wicked ones or your other ones? My other ones, but I don't. I think they were like orange and blue. 
I still want to see your wicked ones. We'll post a picture of them if Kayla can find them. I don't them. know if I can find them, but I'll, I'll search. Okay. I might post a picture of my Nike. It's the only pair I have. Okay. Good job. Yes. Next. Shits or hits. And that's about it, I think. Okay. All right. Do you have any shits or hits this week? If you don't have any, that's fine. Uh, oh, I watched a pretty good movie the other night. Yeah. It's called Braven. Was uh, the sequel to Brave? No. Oh. It was. It had Jason Moma. Is that his name? Momoa. I think it's Momoa. Momoa. That one. That it's one. Momoa? The, yeah. Mimosa. No, that's a drink. Momoa. <laughs> Not Mimosa. <laughs> yes, it had him in it. It was like the first like fifteen minutes. I like wasn't really paying attention, and then this guy got shot in the head, and then I was like, "Oh shit!" and <laughs> started watching it, and then like couldn't stop, and then like. We started watching it way, way, way too late and yeah. couldn't fall asleep for a long time because, like, my heart was racing by the end of it. And it was just, it wasn't scary. It was just, like, a thriller. And it was just, like, glued to the TV. Was it a blockbuster? It was it a big movie? When did it come out? I have no idea. Because I know he's Kyle Drogo? Yes. That's where I knew I'm from. Yeah. I think and he, he was also Khaleesi Aquaman. <laughs> yeah, but that's not out yet. Oh, no, I suppose he was in... Justice League? Justice League. Yeah, and but Batman v Superman. It's almost like unfortunate he was that because apparently there's been rumors this week that what's his face Superman's not gonna be Superman anymore. Really? And there's rumors that Batman's not gonna be Batman anymore. What the hell? And that after Aquaman and the second Wonder Woman, mm-hmm. they might just kind of reboot the whole series again. Well, but you you watch Walking Dead, right? Yeah. You know the guy who plays the guy with the baseball bat. Yes. He might be playing Batman apparently. I, I like him a lot. He, so. he's, he's a good, strong jawline. Yeah, he was also on Grey's Anatomy, and he was Denny Duquette, and it was just a completely different character from Negan, and Denny Duquette was just amazing. Okay, well, <laughs> I don't know about any All right. of that stuff. But. Shits and hits on your end. Okay, well, so I'm going to I'm going to also include in my shits and hits like the revival of ones that I've already done because. <laughs> I still hate that Kanye West song, uh-huh. but that Paul McCartney album, the, like the three songs that I did like, I still like. Okay. I listened to them again. I was like, I still like them. And then the radio station I listened to played them a couple more times. So I actually quite catchy. Not seen the whole album is, mm-hmm. but those three or four songs are pretty good. And it was funny because the day after we spoke about it, I listened to the radio, and then they they were making the same points that I was about him speaking about sex and yeah. being wasted. I thought it was quite cool. Anyway, that's funny. And this week, at the moment, so I listen to a new. I'm. I've told you before. I weird taste in music, and I really like like acoustic folk type music, but not American okay. folk like Scottish folk. Okay. There's two artists which I love. One called Laura Marling, and one called Ben Howard. Okay. Ben Howard had the recent album out. Listening to it at the moment, at the moment, it's kind of on my shits list. Oh no. It's unfortunate, but I'm going to give it a couple more listens, and hopefully, it transfers over to the hits next week. Under re-listening. What do they call that? I don't know. But that's there at the moment. Okay. Other hits. No, I think that's about it. Did I listen to anything else new? Did I watch anything? I didn't watch anything new. That was about it, I think. Right. Oh, I did what I did watch. So, well, I watched Disenchantment. At least the first, like, ten minutes. Okay. So remember Disenchantment? Do I remember that to you? I don't think so. So for those of you who don't listen to the listeners, um, Matt Groening or groaning or groaning or whatever you say his name is the the creator of the simpsons and futurama mm-hmm. created oh, a new show yes. for netflix because this disenchantment or disenchanting mm-hmm. something like that it's a fantasy based cartoon it's got a similar animation style but it's clearly not as well funded because the backgrounds are very stale mm-hmm. and then they've got the kind of cartoon characters of the simpsons essentially Blah, blah, blah. It wasn't so good. I watched 10 minutes and changed over because I just wasn't enjoying it. I might give it another listen because I know some people said it takes a while to get into, but the characters were naff. The writing was awful. So I'm hoping it was just first episode crappiness, but I don't yeah. think that'll be getting a second season so yeah, far. That sucks. But I'll give it another watch and again I'll come back. Hopefully that'll change because I like these other stuff. I like Futurama. Yeah. Simpsons has kind of fallen. All I haven't right. watched any of the new ones. What, Simpsons? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't watched it since like season 12 and it, the golden era. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, 
That's perfect. Me today? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, head us up. Twitter. Instagram. Yep. At the Mumblecast. Yes. And go to our... I don't know if our website's even still working. I, I've not been on I'm it sure it is. Just it go check. Is. Go on. Give Guys, us feedback. let Tell me us know if you can um, click on the link on the Instagram page because trying to get that figured out so just oh, make sure iTunes. huh to take itunes yeah okay so, yeah so let me know if, if you can work click on that and it works also let us know if you actually listen to it on google play um because i know we set that up but i don't know if actually anyone is doing it yeah. it's not it just goes automatically but just yeah. like check okay okay cool well in that case i've been liam i'm kayla and this is your momcast bye bye